transformed my life. That's it's transformed my, my life. life. It's a lamp. It's a lamp unto my feet. Unto my feet. And a light. And a light unto my path. Unto my path. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we got to realize that a lot of people fail to realize the importance of our words and the importance of the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's more than just a Bible. It's a very important tool that's used to transform our lives. And as we teach in the Bible class, that's why the enemy attacks us so much in studying, reading, and really getting into the Word of God. We begin to realize that in, 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 uh, in, our, in our time, in our giving our life to God, that a lot of us find ourselves so caught up in religion to the point we miss the point of what God is calling us to do. Amen? Amen. And see, the reason is he, he attack us in the area of uh, what God is calling us to do because a lot of people realize, a lot of people fail to realize how important the Word of God is. Some people always quick to say, how many of you ever known people when they go through situations, they quick to find out, okay, what did I do to deserve this? What happened in my life to have this happen? Or they go on to a whole dramatic stage of wondering why the big attack occurred in their lives. Amen? But people never, but a lot of people never realize or really search their word to find out that most of the time the attacks that come on our lives isn't because of something we said or did. But yet a lot of people preach out of, uh, without doing their research and without doing their, 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 their study and they never, they never teach the people that we have to be careful of the people we associate ourselves with. Oh, wow. How many of you ever heard that saying, what do they call it, uh, birds of a feather flock together or uh, what do they call it, uh, something by association? Yeah, association brings uh, donation. What did you say? Guilty by association. Yeah, guilty by association. Mm -hmm. Think about it. So, with both of those, I mean, with guilty by association, birds of fathers flock together, and what was that? Well, uh, well, all three of those. Think about it. If you get caught by the police, what happens? And somebody else has. They're not hearing that uh, ignorant of the law saying that. Oh, I didn't know. They're not going to go with that. I didn't know. You're going to be charged with the same thing. You got a lot of people that doing time, doing life, doing all kinds of things in prison because of simple facts that they had um, was associated with somebody. That one move with someone else caused their whole life to change. Mm -hmm. Now, as we begin to look at the, as we begin to look at Deuteronomy, you go to Deuteronomy 28, you begin to see how it says, when you start doing your study, you're looking at Deuteronomy 28, all I keep saying is blessings and curses, blessings and curses, blessings if you do this, blessings if you do that. Mm -hmm. And then in Deut uh, the beginning of Deuteronomy, I mean some part of Deuteronomy, 28, it says, uh, curse, it says, if you disobey God and you don't listen to him and so forth, what happens? He, he started talking about the different curses that come upon you. We're afraid and crying yeah. every man unto his God. Now you notice that now all of a sudden, we, they see such a big storm coming, now everyone's calling unto their God. You notice how when mm -hmm. chaos hit our lives, everybody wants to get religious? Mm -hmm. Or chaos hit our life, now all of a sudden it's time to pray? Mm -hmm. Or chaos hit our life, now all of a sudden we want to start making a let's play, let's make a deal with God? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you never pick up a Bible, you never got religious, but now all of a sudden you get a court case and all of a sudden you want to be religious. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you want to pray, you know, or you get a bad negative report from the doctor, and all of a sudden you want to do everything you saw somebody on TV do. These preachers on TV tell you, all you got to do is do this, do that, do this, do that, and God will save you. But they never tell you that the only key is that you've got to have salvation. Mm -hmm. And that you've got to have true salvation, that you've got to truly believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose three days. You've got to truly give your life to God and be able to walk this walk seriously for God to really move. Mm -hmm. Now, there's times when God moves outside of that, but to get truly to walk in your divine healing and keep stop trying to get caught up in these uh, attacks of the enemy, true mm -hmm. salvation has to take place. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look over here now. We've been five. It says, the Marines, they were afraid, and they cried out every man to his what? God. God. And cast forth the water and cast forth the ware that were in the ship into the sea. Now they're throwing out everything. And they're like, okay, okay, let's this because you know now you got this big storm going on, so all of a sudden they're throwing everything out. You ever get to a point where you get so scared, all of a sudden you start doing all kinds of things. Okay, yeah. maybe this might maybe this might stop it. Or you start making false promises and you start doing all kinds of stuff because of this fear. Mm -hmm. And see what's happening is paranoia hit these people because they don't know what's going on. All they know is they're gonna die. You know, you ever go through a situation where you feel as if you're going to lose mm -hmm. so badly to the point you start feeling nervous, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you start, you know, you start making false promises, and people you normally mad at, now you're being nice to, mm -hmm. and you try to do whatever it takes so that God can show favor on you in that moment and cause that situation you go away to go away. Mm -hmm. So now, it says, they started throwing everything over the ship, into the sea. 
to the light to the what is it to to the sea to lighting it of them. But Jonah was down. But Jonah was gone into the side of the ship, and he laid and was fast asleep. Now Jonah's asleep while all this is happening. You notice that when the ship broke and all the storm kicked out, when Jesus was at the bottom of the ship, he was asleep. Mm -hmm. Now you got to remember, when we look at the Old Testament, I'm sorry, the New Testament, the New Testament is pretty much just types and shadows, meaning that there are just examples, they're not just examples, they're actually things that are going to, they're things that will be occurring in the future, but now you get an idea as you begin to study Jonah, where it represented that Jesus was in the belly, I mean, that Jesus was down there sleeping. You know, or why certain things, how we have Passover, and how we have these different things. So the type and shallow means the simple fact that they're examples, but yet they, although they occur, now that when we come into the New Testament, it gives us an understanding of how they were able to come out of it because they were able to use this situation that happened to Jonah to come out of a certain situation that they were in. Just like with uh, Paul, when Paul was in a, in, a, in a boat and they were going over to, uh, I think it was, uh, I forget the city it was going to, we're going to go and look in there. But he was going to the city and the shipwreck broke off. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. So as we begin to look at this, then it says, number six, it says, So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meaneth thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so, to be that God will think upon, think upon us in peril. Now we're looking over here, and he said to him, won't you call on your God? So they kind of figured if everybody call on a God, one of these people got to listen. One of these deities have to listen. Nobody, all they know is religion. They figured that in somebody's religion, one of their gods will answer the door. It's almost like if you ever read in Elijah, you read in 1 Kings and 2 Kings where it's talked about, you ever hear the story how it talked about how uh, the, 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 the false prophets, the prophets were of, uh, of uh, Jezebel, they were uh, trying to, they were cutting themselves and doing all kinds of stuff to get their God to listen so that their God can soak up the water and burn up the offering. And then Elijah said, won't you just, uh, won't you scream louder? Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's this. And then they went on and on and then nothing never happened. But then when God, when Elijah, it was Elijah's turn to go, all he called on God's name one time. He didn't really have to call on God's name. He did this one thing one time and God took care of the situation. They realized that God was God and that they were serving an idol. So now we look up and say, everybody's saying, call on your God. It's like, this is like, if, in this time, you'll be like, haven't you ever heard somebody going through some situation? All of a sudden, they say, won't you pray for me? Pray that I get this, you know, that this court case go well. Pray that, 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 that I pass this test. Pray that I can get this car. Pray that I can get this. Pray that, because I, I, I know you get a prayer through. Or you might get a prayer through because I, my prayer's not going through. Uh, uh, you know, so now all of a sudden, they're in a desperate mode, so they're calling on any and everybody that can answer. So, they, I mean, they can even call on, I mean, they call on any and everybody that can answer. Now, you got to, now, so now he's like, the shipmaster told him this. Now, now seven, it says, and they, and then said, everyone, to his follow, come and uh, let's cast lots, and we will make known those. I mean, make known to whose cause. Now they're trying to find out who caused the evil. Mm -hmm. Seven. It says now. We, now they're trying to find out why is this happening. Now they decide they want to ask the question: Who's on the boat that's causing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it goes on to cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil. Is, it, is upon us. So he cast lots, and it fell upon Jonah. And he said, that, and to Jonah said, that he knew that it was, it was him that it caused this, that God was trying to get him to, you know, to go back the other way, but he wouldn't confess, you know, he wouldn't say anything, but then, they, then everything fell on him as they tried to, you know, find out who, how it came. Eight, and it says, and he said unto him, tell us, we pray you, for whose cause this evil is upon us, and what thy occupation and whence cometh thou, what country and so forth, all this why, you know, then Snow Nine says, and he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Then were then the word of men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew knew for the men knew that he fleed from the presence of the Lord because the men knew that he freed from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then he said unto them, here you go right now. Then he said unto them, what shall
shall we do unto thee that the sea may come unto us? For the sea were temperate, and then it goes 12, it says, Take me up and cast me, in, cast me forth into the sea, so that it shall, so shall the sea be calmed unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode. So what happened is they wind up tossing them over, and then go down to 15 and says, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea calls him, the sea calls from her rage, so the sea calmed down once they tossed him over there. And then it goes and talks about how uh, Jonah was kept, and then 17 says, Therefore had prepared, it says, Okay, then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offend, off, offered the sacrifice unto the Lord, made vows. Now, the Lord prepared a great what? Fish. 17. The Lord prepared a great fish. Fish. Never said a well, said a fish. Fish, right. But we always go well. Right. You know, fish. see, we don't know what type of animal it was, but we know it was a big fish. Mm -hmm. See, a well is different from a fish. But although it might fall under the category of a fish. So it said he fell, he got uh, swallowed, he said he had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Right. Three nights, three nights right? So now, in this, uh, Jonah was in the, in the belly, but yet we notice that something took place when Jonah disobeyed God. People got cursed because of him. A lot of people almost lost their lives because of him. Right. Think of how many people that you found yourself associated with, or how many people your family members found themselves associated with, and you go, wow, they was a good person, and I can't understand why this happened, and we find out that that person, the reason that these cursed things happened in my house, these cursed things happened in my life, these cursed things happened to my loved one, and I was praying hard for them, is because they were disobeying God, and they were hanging with the wrong person. They were hanging with a person that the enemy was using to have souls sacrificed to, to hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. We quit to say, that's my friend. That's my ace coon. We this, he did this. And then we think about all the great things that this person did in our lives, but then we never realize that once we give our lives to God, there's some... There's some uh, there's some spiritual, uh, okay. uh, I'm having a brain freeze on my spelling. There's a spiritual separation that takes place, or a spiritual divorce that must take place. And that word divorce meaning just to divide. We must, when we give our lives to God, that's the purpose of why we have to go into prayer, studying. Not so much of studying, but yes, studying. But yet, in studying, meaning that we read, meditate, read, meditate, memorize, and for 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 a couple of times in this between now and to the end of the year, we're gonna you're gonna probably hear me use this in a lot of the different sermons because I want to get this drilled in your head. The importance of praying, studying, reading, meditating, and memorizing. And am I missing one more? Read, memorize, read, memorize, meditate, and study. Yeah, because study is right there. Uh, the Word. Because what happens is as we begin to do this, it teaches us how to pray. It begins to show us the will of God for our lives. It begins to show us who and what we need to separate ourselves from. Because what happens is this makes us, uh, it gets us uh, to the point where we're more sensitive to the voice of God. Mm hmm I mean, we must begin to understand the importance. That's why we get attacked in the area of our prayer. Oh, I don't know what to say. I, I'm, when I'm praying, I, all I hear is all the voices going on. All I hear all my situations going on. All I hear is all the different, all I, the enemy started attacking me in my mind. Why? Because your mind is no more than the mind and the soul is the same thing. Mm -hmm. The mind and the soul is the same thing. And people fail to realize that. And see, and that's the thing is, the enemy attacks us in our minds because he's trying to destroy our soul. And see, if he can destroy our soul or get into our soul, or you ever hear that thing that's saying mind games, what happens is the enemy is trying to destroy you or try to use you to destroy other lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're familiar with Genesis, uh, what is it called? John 10.10. 10. 
is uh, the first part of John 10, 10 says that the thief cometh not but what? To steal, kill, and kill, destroy. destroy. That's one of those ones we learn. If and nobody know any other scriptures, they know that one as well. But yet, we never ever, when Jesus made that statement, he never told us who the thief was. So people quick to say the thief was the devil and the thief wasn't the devil. He was the one orchestrating it. He was the one that was pulling the strings to give the thief access into your life. See, because when we're supposed to be praying, studying, and reading and building up our spirit, man, causing our, and our, causing our soul and our mind to be renewed, while mm -hmm. it's not doing these things, what happened is the enemy is constantly studying us so he know how to bring in a thief, bring in somebody to begin to misguide and mislead us and use us to walk in and, and walk in hands with people who are cursed. Mm -hmm. Think about how many times we found ourselves repenting of something that we didn't even do, thinking that it was... It was something we did, and now all of a sudden we say, God, forgive me for this, forgive me for that. And all of a sudden you prayed so much for God not to forgive you from that, that the enemy came in, and all of a sudden you found yourself doing what you can't ask God then to forgive you for, and you're like, wait a minute. So all this time I really wasn't doing this, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden I, I opened myself up to it. So in the prayer, what happened is when we do this, you notice that I didn't say anything about quoting scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. So religion teaches us to quote scripture, and people quote scripture and have no idea what they're saying. They're just saying it because they think that would grow the devil out then quoting scriptures will not war off the devil. Quoting scriptures will not do exorcisms. Quoting scriptures will not do anything but yet allow people to say that you are you verse and skilled in words. Mm. But what will war off the devil, what causes the devil when you begin to speak the word? Mm -hmm. Because quoting, all quoting is just saying something verbatim. Mm -hmm. You know, they ever have, you ever had a kid or somebody, you, you talking, all of a sudden they repeating everything you say? Mm -hmm. At first it starts off funny, after a while it gets annoying. Mm -hmm. You know? And like I said, Jacob got that bad. He liked to do that, right? Mm. And at first it starts off cute. It starts off fun. Then after a while it gets annoying. And then it gets a whooping. <laughs> but what happened is, as we begin to quote, as we begin to speak the word, we're not speaking from, from what we read. We're starting to speak it from what we know. That's why it's important to memorize and meditate, because in memorizing and meditating, what it does is it causes your spirit man in the time of trials and situations that you're going through, it causes your spirit man to start talking to you. Mm -hmm. What I mean by talking to you, I don't mean like when you see people going down the street talking to themselves. They begin to start giving you direction. You like hearing that strong thing inside of you, that strong, the, the Holy Spirit saying, don't go. You know? Or you feel like having an argument that said, don't. Mm -hmm. Or you feel like doing certain things and the Holy Spirit raised up and said, don't. But a lot of people don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit, so what do they say? Something told me, or I feel. You see, but as we begin to understand the importance of praying, studying, reading, and meditating, we, don't know this, we begin to know the voice of God. But yet we begin to look at this, and today's topic is about, do you know who you're hanging around? Do you know who's around you? Do you know who's in your, in your house? Do you know who's in your life that's causing these curses to engulf you? That's causing you to be bound. You think about it. You go through. You ever have? You ever have a situation where all hell is breaking loose in your house and chaos breaking loose in your house and everything that possibly can go bad is going bad and all of a sudden when it really, 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 really start affecting you, start going, "What did I do wrong, Lord? What did I do to deserve this? Why is this happening to me?" And now you're screaming out. Now you're crying in the bed. And, and, and just because you're crying is not going to move the hand of God. You crying is not going to do anything. Now, if you were crying because of, uh, 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 see, there's certain type of things that causes, causes the move of God when you're in that, in that teary mood. But God's not moved by our emotion because people move, people, God's not moved by our emotions. Mm -hmm. Just put it that way. Mm -hmm. Because if you move by our emotion, a lot of people will be dead. You know, think about those cries and those tears that you cried and you prayed and you was like, God, I don't understand why they don't understand me. I wish they were this, I wish they were that. And all these psychic prayers we prayed and people would be dead. Thank you. No, I just thank God that he don't just answer every prayer or answer every emotional prayer. So then we begin to find ourselves not asking the question, but yet as we begin to understand the importance of studying, we begin to start looking from Genesis to Revelation that the reason many attacks come on in our house and come in, in our lifestyle because of the people we call friends. The people we call loved ones. The people we call children. The people we call this and we, the people we call uh, co-workers. The people we call this. The people we call that. Because what happens is they, they come in as friends almost like, how I many of you are familiar with those vampire movies? Mm -hmm. In the vampire movies, 
See, in some movies, some vampire movies, they start giving you documentaries on how how a vampire became a vampire, right. how Dracula became Dracula, right. and then as you begin to do the research, you begin to find out that the word Dracula, and uh, I think it's like etymology, is the origin of the word Dracula came from devil. Mm -hmm. So in reality, Lucifer was really the supposed to be the the Dracula because what happened is he constantly bit one person, and then they became one, and then they became one, and then they began to branch off to different spots, and then as you begin to look at Draculas. And vampires, you realize that they're demons because they're operating in demon forms. They hypnotize people. But yet, you look at the vampire movies, and most of the vampire movies, or the new ones rather, uh, and some of the old ones, they said they couldn't come in unless you what? Allow Invite them in. And you know, you have some people say, they can't, so come on in. It's like, no, no, you say, well, uh, what, what, what say you say? You have to invite us in. And that's like with demonic spirits. And some demonic spirits you have to invite in. Some demonic spirits, you don't have to invite them in because... They are coming in by association with people. They come in with other people. Mm. See, because we never, I mean, how many times do you ever, do you, ever you know, just say, okay, I need to pray up the threshold of my house and my window. You know, I need to pray because these, you know, after these people left my house. I need to pray before these people come to my house. How many of us really thought to pray over our, pray in our house before we get company or guests? But yet, then, we get these people coming to our house. We have a great time. We have a nice party. Somebody lose their mind. And then all of a sudden, you're like, wow, what's really going on? And in the process of losing their mind, they had to lose their mind so that they can drop seeds and eggs in your house, mm -hmm. like rats and roaches. Mm -hmm. wow. So now all of a sudden, you're wondering why all hell breaking loose in your house, and you're like watching pictures on TV, and the pictures say, well, this is a cursed object. And you have to have something in your house that looked like that, and you spent like $100 on it, or you spent a nice prince of money, or it was passed down from generation to generation. But yet, it never happened, but yet, something happened to activate that thing, or it wasn't even that thing at all. That was just a replica of something similar to that, but it was actually that person that came into your house. And when they came into your house, all they did was just kept dropping little feces things. And you're like, sometimes you can smell them, and sometimes you can't. You ever go in your house, you're like, what is that? And you couldn't find out what it was, but you start cleaning up your house, and you know it's not in the house, but it's just... It's almost like the more you think about it, the more you smell it. It's like when you go to the hospital. When you go to the hospital, you, you go to certain floors, you can smell cancer. You go to certain floors, you can smell certain things, because the cancer kind of has that more, it has a stronger type of fetus type, a feces type of smell. Or you go to certain floors, they have different scents, and you wonder, what is that scent? The scent is of different demons that's hovering and governing over these different things. So then we begin to realize that Jonah, and all these people almost lost their all these people almost lost their lives because Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he knew that the moment he go to Nineveh and deliver the message that God gave him, that they'll give their life to God, they'll fast, they'll do whatever God said, and then and that land be changed. So then we began to look at this, but then the question is, who is in my life that's causing this chaos? See, because in most places we go, they never teach us the important part of studying, reading, and meditating because what happened is it changes our way of praying because it changes our outlook and it causes us to know how to pray God's will and how to, how to speak what God says in our prayer life to cause God to move effectively and powerfully to change our lives and the lives of the people. He'll teach us what to say to those people that we need to get out of our lives See, because sometimes we want to take people in our lives because they're going through all hell and high water. You ever see somebody you get every time you see them they're going through a lot of stuff? But I mean they, they I mean they got the saddest story ever. Sometimes it really plays on your emotion and then all of a sudden you feed into it. Okay, here's some money. Okay, here you can stay with me. Okay, you can this, you can that. And then the moment they do it, all heck is breaking loose in your house and you wonder, okay, wow, we never argued like this before. You know, I mean we had our arguments, but it never got to this point. We 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 had these discussions, but I never saw this before, you know. I, I mean I'm looking now all of a sudden we're looking in the house and trying to find out what do we got in this house that's causing this. Mm -hmm. Or what was said to cause it. Because some people come in your house and like to start up stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll come and say, they'll drop a little sentence here and little hints there and this. And all of a sudden you sit there like, that, that happened like before I met you. Or that happened before this. That happened before that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you got this stuff going on in your house. Now the question is, who do I have in my life? that's causing the chaos. Uh -huh. Who do I have that's in my life that the enemy is using as a thief to kill, steal, and destroy what God has promised me? Because now I'm sitting here like, wait God, your word said this, your word said that, and all of a sudden it's like all my prayers are hitting death doors, my prayers are hitting death doors. Uh -huh. so my, what's happening is my emotions have gotten away and they're blinding me. Uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. Imagination, man. Where pictures are drawn in our mind. You know how people say, when people attach their imagination to their emotions, it really sparks up a crazy argument. Because now your mind is racing and the enemy is playing thoughts and you're seeing this thing plotted out in your mind of something you thought was going on. In reality, it was, it was the enemy playing games in your mind. Mm -hmm. So now you go, well, my mind don't prove me. Or you did this before. All of a sudden, the enemy is bringing so many different things. And now you got this picture in your head. And now your emotions attached to the picture. Now you got a lot of violence going on. Now let's look at the intellect. The intellect is what? The reasoning. Is reasoning. Intellect is reasoning. The understanding. And what else? Where plotting begins in the intellect because we're reasoning and understanding. That's what we make all the things we plot out things good or bad. You know those things that you know either good or bad. We're plotting out in our mind. We pondering on thoughts. Okay, if I do it like this, then this will happen. So we draw out this picture in our mind. Now it's attached to our imagination, and all this stuff is being together. Now we're drawing these pictures, and all these pictures coming forth. And now, now what are we going to lie about starts to make a little more sense because we reason it to the point we began to get a clarity on how we were going to tell that lie. Mm -hmm. Now we got the desires, which is a strong feeling or craving. The desire is a strong craving. Strong craving or understanding. No, it's not. It's a strong craving or a strong feeling is the desire. And the will is your want or something you choose or something you decide on. Something you choose is your will. So now we look at this. The enemy is trying to destroy us by attacking our emotion. Uh -huh. Because in our emotion, it causes us to attach ourselves to these people who are cursed, causing us to be caught up in that curse. Mm -hmm. Think about how many people you found yourself attached with, and that some part of you, you felt that the Holy Spirit or, or God was telling you, get away, but yet you found yourself attached to them because it might was, if I don't do it, where is it? In intellect, you start reasoning, if I don't do it, then somebody, then this can happen to them. If I don't do it, then this can happen. Well, if I don't give it to them, then somebody else will. I might as well give it to them. Or it's, you know, then we get caught up in justifying. Then it's to the point that we find ourselves in our intellect and our reason. We find ourselves justifying the sin they're in. So now we're enabling them, and we're enabling them. Then we're still coming under the curse because we enable them. So now we're connected through a thing called and. Soul ties and spiritual ties. And see, both of them are unseen. But see, although the Bible doesn't speak about soul ties and spiritual ties, it teaches us how to get free from these things. You see, because what happens under soul ties, forgive me, I'm not a good drawer, we find ourselves in bondage to some person, place, or thing. Find ourselves yoked up with that person. So that's why it's so hard to get free because we're yoked with that person. The yoke is used to bind the animal, two oxen together, so that they can. Uh, what do you call this? It's two oxen. They, you can. You ever look at the book in the, in the Bible? Always speaks of don't be uh, yoked up with this or yoke this. We well, was talking about that device they used to put on two uh, oxen's necks so that they can pull something. You know, you ever see uh, two oxes or two horses together and they have a little device that has them together so they can stay in line? Mm -hmm. They even used this to put on uh, the necks of slaves when they were bringing away so that they couldn't get away where they basically where shackles came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible speaks and says, do not be yoked up with unbelievers. Mm -hmm. But yet we find ourselves yoked up with unbelievers. It says, how can two walk together unless they what? In agreement. Mm -hmm. Or how can two walk together unless they agree? That's what the Bible said. It doesn't say unless they're in agreement. Maybe a different translation might say that. But it says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Right. So then we find ourselves wondering, why am I going through what I'm going through? The question is, who am I tied to that's causing all of this? Amen? Amen. Everybody still there? Yes. 
So we gotta ask ourselves, we gotta really start doing searching, we gotta begin to come out of religion and come into a relationship and understand the importance of studying, reading, meditating, and memorizing scripture, not for the simple fact that just saying I know the Bible, but for the simple fact that as I begin to know these things, what happened is my spiritual eyes, forgive me, my spirit, I just write it out because I can't draw eyes from it. Your spiritual eyes begin to open. And what happens when your spiritual eyes begin to open? Then your spiritual man becomes a, comes alive, and then you begin to get a revelation, or get insight, knowledge begin to teach you how to break free of people, places, and things that are causing the bondage in your life. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, how do I get free, or how do I break the yokes of bondage that's around my life? The thing is, the only way that I can do that is to really give my life to God. The reason I can only way it can be done is to really get into the presence of God because as I begin to read, study, and fast, I begin to calm the storms in my head so that I can be able to pray the word. See, because it's hard to pray God's word when you're trying to say, uh, pray a certain scripture and all of a sudden the enemy attacks you with that scripture. And by him attacking you with that scripture, all of a sudden he's like, well, what's he just a prayer? You know, and, and unless I get this right, then I guess I can't pray. And that's not true. The thing is that I got to understand, I got to know how to break how to disconnect, how to divorce myself from the devil, how to divorce myself from people, places, and things, how to, uh, what do you call it, cut the communicational lines of the enemy from speaking to me while I'm praying or speaking to me, period. And the only way I can do that is do my, do my, my uh, intimate time with the Lord. And people fail to realize intimate time with the Lord is in your prayer time, in your study and your reading time because what happened is it teaches you how to hear God and how to pray what God say pray in your prayer. You see, because what do you think about it? As long as we have a, as long as, I mean, I might be wrong, let me know if I'm wrong. But many of us would talk, we pray, right? And what we pray, we pray whatever we feel in our hearts. He said, just pray to God, just talk to him like you talk to somebody else. Or just pray, you know, whatever you're expecting for God to do, start praying it. And then, that's the, that's the key to the new life. Because oh, okay. uh, I, I got something a little bit about stirring so then they begin, we begin to hear people say, pray this, pray that, pray this, pray that, pray this, pray that. And then in reality, we pray all these different prayers, but then it seems like God's not listening. Mm -hmm. And then as we begin to realize it, we found ourselves that we wasn't really praying, all we were just doing is just having a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And all we were doing is just conversating, and we were wondering why our prayer wasn't going through, because we wasn't really praying. We were, we were bargaining and making, a, we were having a bargaining session with God, and we were having a, 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 just a conversation. We weren't praying. See, a lot of people don't know the difference between talking to God and praying to God. They think it's the same thing. But then as you begin to study, and then you begin to read and memorize scripture, you begin to understand how to, when, what is prayer and what is talking. Because there's a difference between me talking to you and me talking at you. There's a difference between me conversating with you and me sitting down there and what's having a prayer session. See, because when you're praying, you're detaching yourself from your emotions. You're detaching yourself from what you think. You're allowing your imagination to shut down, your wants and your desires, your wills and all that. You're allowing all of this to shut down so that your soul can be renewed. Because what's happening as you begin to do this, your soul is being renewed, so it's causing your, your emotions and everything to line up with the will of God. So when your emotions begin to bind up with the will of God, when you start praying, you understand when the enemy is attacking because your emotions are not in the way. Think about it. You ever ask somebody to pray for you and they call themselves trying to prophesy and all they're doing is praying what they want to be done in your life. Well, God, you know this and that. And then they know, okay, you say, well, pray for this to be, if this happened in my life. Uh, you know, if you got a situation going on, oh, God, pray for this to happen in my life. Uh, I'm having an issue or pray for my marriage or pray for my... Uh, my, 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 this. Pray for my, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they start praying exactly what you asked to pray, and then they start adding a little bit and just say, well, you know, God said this and that and the other. In reality was, they prayed and prophesied out of their emotion, so in reality is, the question is, who were they talking about when they said that God said? Mm -hmm. See, because when you start praying out of your emotions, you miss, you, it's hard to hear God's voice because the enemy is constantly babbling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you ever tried to talk to somebody and they wouldn't listen to you? And they go, no, 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 no. Or they keep talking. He's like, wait a minute, if you listen to me. Or they ask you a question. And all of a sudden, they, they keep going on and on. He's like, wait a minute, do you want the answer or do you just want to keep going on? So they keep going on. But then that's how emotions are. Emotion blind us and it deaf us and it makes us mute to what God is saying. So we can't hear what God is saying because we're trapped in emotions. 
Oh God, please make that go away. Please this, please that, please, 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 please. We're having a pleading party, a pity party. And when it's all said and done, we realize that we're not talking to God. All we're doing is talking to ourselves, having a theatrical moment. Mm -hmm. And then our emotion, then all of a sudden we're reasoning and rationalizing, and all of a sudden we thought we were praying, but then we got so caught up in our religious mindset to the point that we didn't realize that it was us talking, reasoning with ourselves, and then we're reasoning with ourselves, okay, then this, this, and then when you come out of prayer, say, okay, thank you, Jesus. And it was you that told yourself, okay, this is what you're going to do. And you know it wasn't God because it was a nice lie that, that said, okay, you just say this, and it, it, it'll clean the whole thing, and it only made things worse. So that's why it's important to this, and it's important to begin to look around and find out who we're attached to. See, because the people we're attached to, it's like eating fast food. Many of us, and I'm guilty of it, find my, I find myself sometimes, as long as I got money, and I got time, I guess, I'll find myself spending money on a lot of food where I could have just bought lunch to work. But if you begin to start doing your research, you realize that if you eat too much fast food, or you eat too much McDonald's, or you eat too much Burger King, or you eat too much of this, uh, this processed food and stuff like that, what happened is, there is an attack that comes on your, your digestive system. There's a thing come on your, your body, and all of a sudden you wonder why you're going through all you're going through. And it's going to because, that's why it says in Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, in, in that particular verse, it was called for the simple fact that the priests or the preachers, they weren't really teaching the people. They were feeding off of the people. Mm. And by them feeding off of the people, they weren't telling the people what they needed to do to get deliverance. But yet, when we find ourselves eating a bunch of garbage, what happens? That garbage begins to eat us. Oh. And sin, that's what it is when we find ourselves around people that we shouldn't be around. They begin to eat off of us, and we begin to pick up their habits. We begin to pick up their ways. You ever do something all of a sudden? You ever say or do something all of a sudden? You have a vision of that person when you did it. Mm -hmm. You're like, ooh, wow, I just had a, you know, it's like when you did it, all of a sudden, it's like God or somehow you had that vision of them. You know, somebody say a certain word a certain time, and then you wind up saying a certain word, and all of a sudden you have a, mm -hmm. you know. Or you say a certain word as a man, and all of a sudden you have, it seems as a feminine mode hit real quick, and you're like, ooh, God, what was that? You know, and see, and that's what happens when we find ourselves eating so much junk, watching too much television, watching, reading too much garbage, participating in too much stuff. We're feeding ourselves and we're digesting so much junk to the point that it's eating us alive. Mm. And see, people got the big misconception. They say gifts and talent, gifts and calling come from our repentance. But it also happens that although you might operate in it, you still can cause infection to happen to other people mm. and kill other people. So we got to ask ourselves, we got to do this, I mean, your homework this week, whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. is to start looking around and seeing who's in your life that you need to get away from. There was a time in my life once where I was in a relationship, mm -hmm. and in this relationship, God told me to separate myself from some people, mm -hmm. told us to separate ourselves from some people. The moment you said we, we did that, all kinds of stuff happened in the relationship for the, for the best. Mm -hmm. The moment we reconnected, without hearing God, we reconnected to those people. All hell break loose. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And see, the sad part about it, although these people are cursed, even having a picture in your house get caused in the house. Mm. Wow. I learned that through a dream. Because I just kept feeling uneasy at one point, and every time I had a dream, the picture would pop up. So then I picked the picture up, and I hid the picture, and things calmed down. Mm. Didn't this make any sense? Make a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. So we gotta ask ourselves: If all hell is breaking loose in my house, nine times out of ten, if it's not me. Uh -huh. Then it's somebody or something that I'm connected to that has this. Because if God said to, to Abraham, I'm going to bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, mm -hmm. could it mean also that those who are cursed drags a lot of people in? Because you think about it. Every time you look at this, I'm going to close with this. I want to I wanna bring this one to you. because I, And we're going to finish this up a little bit next week. Right. But I, I wanted to bring this to you because I was like, I was, oh, let's go to Acts uh, 27 and 13. Now, I'm going to try to speed this one up for you real quick, so when you get there, we can just read the, uh, that particular text I want to give you. Uh -huh. This speaks about how Paul 
was a uh, great uh, he was on a on a boat and he was very he, uh, he was uh, they were taking him over and he's supposed to get punished for something you know you know these like they were going to prison nowadays you go on a boat I mean you go on a bus and then some people take I get the I don't know the ones that get on a plane I don't know what you call those but they most of the time you see when you driving down the street or you going down 55 you see that big uh, uh, what do you call it uh, that uh, the well, prison bus. Uh -huh. I forget the name of it. It looked like a state trooper bus, but it's a prison bus. And well, Paul was on this on this ship, and they were going to another place. And all of a sudden, all all the storms started kicking in, and the storm started raging. Acts 27, 13, 14. And the storm kicked in, and they didn't know what was going on. Now, let me explain something to you. All those people are, uh, curses are attached to people. Also, certain things that a city does brings on different attacks as well. If you look up every storm and every tornado and every attack that hit the city, like tornadoes, waves, and tsunamis, if you look behind the name that they give them, there's a dangerous, there's a meaning behind the name. Mm -hmm. Now, as we begin to look at it, even if you begin to look at uh, when Jesus was on the boat, mm -hmm. Now, one scripture, when Jesus was on the boat, they said that uh, he went in more, in more debt. In Matthew, he went more debt. It said that he was on the boat, and he was at the bottom sleeping. And what happened was, the, the thing is, from a long time until to today, I don't know why today was the, the most that I got the clarity on it, but we were taught that, that the storm raged, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus was on the boat, and the storm kicked in, and... The, the disciples freaked out, right? Mm -hmm. It's just at the storm. Mm -hmm. But yet, in this particular text, it says that the storm came and it overtook the boat. Mm -hmm. It kept, you know, you ever see all those uh, those uh, most dangerous jobs or the crabs? Uh, you ever mm -hmm. see how they collect lobsters and they show the boat mm -hmm. and stuff? And they, it's weird that people want to risk their lives just to collect lobsters to sell to people and crabs to sell to people. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then when you think about it, if you eat it, it's really because you're just eating uh, fishes that are really just roaches of the, of the sea. Right. So we we eaten this thing, so then they risked their lives to feed us a roach. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they said the boat, the water was taking over the ship. And it was taking over the ship, so they were freaking out. They were losing their mind. They were like, okay, what's going on? And uh -huh. Jesus sleep, and they're like, don't you care that this, you know, that we die? And so Jesus gets up, he looks, and he says, he says, he gets what? He speaks to the song. Mm -hmm. They said, what might our man do? Now, you remember when we, looked, we did the research on that word about that storm, it was talking about, it was a marine spirit. Right. Which came and they, they what they did, what it was known for doing it was known for causing chaos in the storms, mm -hmm. you see. But when you begin to start uh, doing your research on demons or demonic spirits, you notice that they're they're no gender, but when they become in a human form, they take on a, either male or female figure. Right. So then this spirit came and these spirits are called the, the winds, the four winds of the earth, mm -hmm. and they came and they were trying to destroy the world. So now let's look over let's look over here real quick as we go over to John. Acts 27. Now, Acts 27, 14, it says, let's go to 13, it says, when the south wind blew softly, supposedly that they, were, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosening, hence they sailed close by Crete. That sounds like hits their throat, right? Like a tongue twister. And so now, let's look at this right here, 14. See, because when a lot of times when we read the word, a lot of people just screw up, I mean, uh, not screw up. A lot of people just scam over the word, right? And they say, okay. But then, then you say, I read this, but I don't get to understand. What happened is the reason we didn't get an understanding because we didn't meditate on it. And when you begin to meditate on it, it caused you to want to look up certain words to wonder, okay, what made this storm occur? Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible starts telling us as you begin to read and study the Bible, Read, meditate, and study. You begin to realize the Bible be telling us about the names of different demons that are causing these different things to happen. As you begin to study, meditate, and as you begin to study, read, and meditate, as you begin to start praying, God will begin to expose the demonic spirits, the demonic spirits that are in the lives of these people that are attaching themselves to you, so that you know what to pray against, so that you know what to fast against, so that you know what to do to cause the demonic stronghold that's on that person, place, or thing to lose its hold, so that you can give victory. See, because it's hard to let go, it's hard to, to listen to this sermon and then you realize that it's a child. Mm -hmm. It's hard to listen to this sermon when you find out it's your spouse. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you hear the word, God hates divorce. So you hear, and people start preaching how God hates this, how God hates that, and this, this, that, and that. But then you realize, you hear this sermon, and all of a sudden you find out it's your child. Mm -hmm. 
So then the question is, if I, if I develop a relationship with the Father in my reading, meditating, and memorizing, in my prayer time, God, in my prayer time, then all of this will teach me how to pray and how to worship. Now, praise and worship isn't just singing. Yeah. But it starts showing me how to do that, and then in the process of doing that, it'll tell me when and when to pray and when to read. <laughs>